I'm Melissa Chartrand. I'm here with Sandy Boudreau down at what I like to call my summertime office down at the High Arch Shanties. You know I love it here, right? It's beautiful down here. It is so beautiful down here right on Hyannis Harbor, a working waterfront. And of course, the shanties are open, Sandy. I don't know if, if our viewers, hopefully, hopefully they know this, I certainly tell them enough, that the shanties are open from mid-May right through the end of September. So here we are uh, towards the end of the season, but certainly time for visitors to come down and meet local artists such as yourself. And that's why we're here. We want to talk a little bit to you today about your work and also your experience in the shanties. So how long have you been doing the shanties for now? I think it might be my sixth season. Yeah. And I love it. It's great down here. It's good exposure. You couldn't ask for a better atmosphere. People from all over the world come here. And um, I really love it. Sure. It's great. And not only the visitors themselves, but I know that we always talk about the wonderful rapport among the artists that are here because we rotate artists in on a weekly basis and so that you're always with a different artist. Oh yes, it's great to meet new people and um, see what they do and we're all a little different. Everybody's unique and it uh, brings a lot of art down to this community and I think it's great for hyenas. Great. And let's talk a little bit about your work itself. Well, I'm a Cape Cod native, so I, a lot of my work is very Cape Cod-y. I mean, I, I'm on the water quite a bit, and a lot of my things are sailboats and fish. As you can see, I love fish, and my kids all, all grew up sailing at the Highness Yacht Club, and I just painted them and got me right into uh, what I'm doing today. Are you, did, were you always a painter? I've been an art teacher for 33 years, and um, I picked up painting when the kids were young, and went with it and I really enjoy it and I can't wait to um, actually do more of it. So. And this is a perfect setting where sometimes I've seen you down here painting for oh, sure. I'm waiting for the sun to go around the shanty and I'm going to be painting real soon. And that's what we love to say, that, that our viewers can come here and meet the local artists. You certainly are local. I will be painting <laughs> on location. I love painting on location. It's great. And do you do that often? So not when you're just, as you said, you're a teacher, and obviously you're here for just one week, but year-round you find yourself, you must know a lot of the hidden spots? I don't do as much as I should. I do like to do activities like golf and get out and enjoy the activities. So I, this really makes me get back into, i got to paint, I've got to paint. And so I, I do go in different locations this year. I've done Duxbury, Situate, and I'm a little, you know, a little outside my outside of Cape Cod, which was kind of neat to do, too. But sure, but there's nothing like Cape Cod. Let's, no. let's keep it local, no. Sandy. <laughs> I definitely keep it local, but it's kind of nice to know that, uh, you know, there's no there are other like places. Home. Cape Cod has probably got the most areas to go to. P-Town, sure. all the way, the best light. The best light is definitely on Cape Cod. And how do you keep it fresh? Like you say, you certainly know your subject matter is influenced by uh, your surroundings. Do you ever get influenced by the visitors that come through? Do they have suggestions for you that you say, oh, there's an idea I haven't tried? Sometimes I get ideas from other people, yes, and, um, and go with it, sure. And you certainly have a variety of work, so from the visual, I'm looking at the tiles and what you can hang on the wall to postcards and keychains and all sorts of interesting items. There's certainly something for everyone to take home a little Cape Cod memory. Oh, you have to have lots of little things for people to take home. I mean, if they're packing and they're from a long ways away, they can't be taking big things home. But I do sell big things as well, sure. you know, originals, some originals in the shanty, but we have a little bit of everything for everyone. Now, from the shanties, we talk about how people come from around the area, the region, the world. Do you know where the farthest your artwork may be at this time? I really don't know, but there have been people already from Paris and Wales. It's great. Russia, Germany. It's nice that it's we have so many people from around the world that are coming here to visit to visit our hometown, for it sure. really attracts a lot. I mean, Hyannis itself is a big hub, and everybody wants to come to Hyannis. Right. So this is a great addition right down to the waterfront. Well, we're glad you participate. So for Sandy Boudreau, who's one of our Shanty Artists this season, you can find information on her as well as all of the artists in the Shanty program right online at highartsdistrict.com. And now we're going to take a look at, uh, we've let's see, we've talked about visual arts. We're going to go meet a local jeweler. Hello, I'm Melissa Chartrand. I'm here with Annie Bernstein down at the Shanties. And the process of your jewelry is so interesting, Hannah. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is and what you're doing here? So the piece I'm working here on here is a piece of Viking knit, which is one of the first ways, known ways of uh, making uh, jewelry and making chain. And it was uh, pieces like this was found in Viking graves. 
and I found out how to do the process and now I make uh, necklaces and bracelets and I do my own take on it. I add pearls or beads or, or whatever just to make it interesting in my own way of making it. And obviously as you say yeah. it's a part of your heritage and so yeah. the interest in learning how did it take you a long time to learn the process? Uh, it took me a long time. First I found description in a book and that didn't work very well and then I uh, uh, did what everybody does. I went on, on uh, Google <laughs> and YouTube and actually somebody showed how to do it. Wow. And then I practiced and practiced. The first tries were not very pretty, but I kept practicing and now I love making it. It's beautiful. It's so intriguing and so different and fascinating to me that you can actually weave or knit the yeah. metal. So this is a weaving process. The earrings I'm wearing are crocheted with a normal crochet hook from a 14 karat gold fill wire. So I work in gold fill wire and sterling silver. And then as you say, you add your own pieces. So where does that inspiration come from for you? Uh, so some, some of the uh, inspiration comes from like, I have a collection called The Wave. Like I have a necklace in here that's a wave necklace and it comes from like the waves in the ocean. Some pieces are inspired by my grandmother's lace making. She used to make lace and, and that's a more I think like the piece you see over there on the on the dress is more like a lace piece. Sure, I love how that is in, interwoven. Yeah. <laughs> pardon the yeah. pun into your work. Do you have a favorite piece or a favorite style that you like to make? Usually, my latest uh, piece or my latest design is my favorite one. But I think that the wave necklace is definitely one of my favorites because it had that sculptural design. That Does really it take nice. a long time to make these pieces? So a necklace like the one I mentioned, uh, it takes an hour to make an inch. So it takes, oh, wow. so far, like an 18 inch necklace, it's about 20 hours to make it because that's the, the whole piece and then there's a the finish and all that, so. So I hope that the customers really appreciate the time that goes into each piece, a lot of love and a lot of time into they, creating they really a piece. They do appreciate it and they also appreciate to see me sit and sure. actually do the work. And, and that creates an understanding of what goes into the process. Absolutely. Now, let's talk a little bit about the shanties itself. As far as being here, this is your second year being here at the shanties. We love to have some repeat artists. And I know that you meet people from all around the world, the country, the region. We meet people from all over America. We meet uh, people from all over Europe, from Australia, from everywhere. And so your work, I'm sure, then goes to some of these parts of the world. My work, our work goes to all these parts of the world, and we always write down where the piece went to, because it's nice to know. Sure it is. Yeah. And what do you love about being a part of the shanties? I love it's such a friendly atmosphere. It's a beautiful place to sit and work. I mean, it's like being on vacation and working at the <laughs> same time. Everybody in the shanties is like a little community, a little family, and we enjoy each other's company, and we enjoy meeting all these people, all the tourists that come by. So we've just met a few of the artists down at the High Arts Artist Shanties, and you can meet some local artists and artisans right here every day in September, 11 a.m., right through 5 p.m. You can get all the information on them and the program itself. If you're interested in participating next year, get all the details right online at highartsdistrict.com. At the High Arts Artist Shanties, my home away from home, I'm Melissa Chartrand, wishing you an artful day.